Hello everybody, welcome back to another Strengths Materials video. This one obviously is on Moment of Inertia by Integration. Uh, you guys seem to really enjoy the last video I made uh, for this topic, so I just wanted to pick a super easy problem and just go step by step on how we're applying these formulas to solve a problem like this. And we have a complex curve here and we're looking for the moment of inertia about this area. We're looking for it about the y-axis. So if you remember, we did a video previously talking about the theory uh, behind these formulas and why they work. But in this video, I just wanted to go step by step on what we are looking for when solving these problems, right? So the first thing is that it's asking for the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So what that means is that if we're going to be taking integration about the y-axis, then we should be looking at reference strips that are parallel to that axis. Why is that? Because the formula, how it works is you have iy is equal to x squared dA, where x squared is the distance from your reference axis, meaning that the segment is running parallel to that reference. So let's see what that looks like on the figure. So there it is added to the figure now. We have x distance away from this segment and these segments as per integration, you know, just get added together as you go across this x axis. Meaning that in order to solve any problems with respect to this strip, we have to understand what uh, the area of the strip is, which is dA, right? So dA is going to be solved by understanding what the width of the strip is and the height of the strip is. And we know that as we move across the x-axis, we are going to be shrinking the size of this strip and that apex or peak or max value of the strip is going to be y equals to two minus two x to the power of three. That is governing the height of each of these strips, meaning that this height should be y. And since it's an infinitesimally small strip on the x-axis, we have a thickness of dx as well. So now that we understand that, we can actually go ahead and solve for what dA is to use it in this formula, because this is simply a rectangle and all we're working with is y times dx. So dA right there says y times dx. And we know what that y value is because it is given to us. It's always going to be equal to two minus two x to the three times dx, which is our theoretical thickness for each of these segments. Now we can go ahead and start plugging in to the formula to actually solve for what iy is, which is the moment of inertia about that y-axis. So the first things first, we need to rewrite our formula. We have the integral from zero to a, x squared dA. We know what dA is, and there is one more variable that we need to understand, which is the a value. And the only thing that we know is that this strip is traveling along the x-axis starting from zero and ending at what value? It's one. So that means our a value here is simply going to be plugged in as one. So I've added it to our figure just so that we can keep, uh, keep track of where our variables are coming from. So we can now finally start plugging in. We have the integral from zero to one, which is once again, that strip's travel path. We have x squared and then dA which is two minus two x to the three dx. This all looks really good because we have all of our terms in terms of x with this dx at the end, meaning that we are totally fine to integrate and won't have a combination of x and y variables. So we can proceed by just distributing this x squared into this two minus two x to the power of three and then integrate as normal. So let's see what that looks like. All right, now that's all distributed, let's go ahead and integrate. We know the rule. This x is going to be plus 1, and we're going to bring that 2 plus 1 to the bottom. So this is going to be 2 over 3 on the bottom times x to the 3. And then the same thing for this as well. We have x to the 5 right now. That's going to turn to a 6. That 6 comes down as the denominator, and that is the integration for these simple uh, exponents, right? 
So let's see what that looks like. All right, so now we have a definite solution for this problem. All we have to do is go ahead and plug in our values. So we have a, which was equal to one, and zero as the other term, meaning that when we plug in one, all of these terms are simply gonna be just that coefficient at the front. So we have two over three minus two over six. So that's gonna look like this, two over three minus two over six, and that's gonna leave you with 0 0.33 three inches to the power of four. That's your solution for this problem. And uh, I hope the visual helped once again. Uh, and let me know if you want to see a couple more problems like this. I'll see, maybe we can find a little bit uh, more of a tricky one uh, for the future.